Got a morning person, which is good, so I had that time by myself. Yeah, this is not being broadcast. It's just <laughs> Mr. Tolker is, is zooming in, but we're not broadcasting. Okay, okay super. So, uh, roll call, please. Um, Allison Umark, Commissioner Wessel, Commissioner Robinson, Commissioner Lautner, all present. Okay. And we'll have a Pledge of Allegiance, if you'll join me. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, and I sat, but if we can have our moment of silence. Okay. Thank you. Mine's on the meeting. Okay. Uh, for the agenda, is there anything anyone would uh, um, like to add or delete at this time? No, but I know all three of you have commitments, so we made a vow we're going to be done no later than 11:45. Perfect. 11:30 if possible, because all three of you have things to go to. Yep. Right. Yep. That'll be our goal to be done at 11:45. Um, if not, we'll move on. Um, any public comment this morning from anyone? I see none. Okay, so the first thing this morning is we have approval of the minutes from the March 23rd meeting. Anything? Uh, anyone? The March 23rd? Yes. I know that we approved the minutes uh, from Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022. Support. Okay, a motion to support. See no hands for discussion. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same. Okay, 3 0, approval of those minutes. Okay, the illegal opinion review. We have um, attorney David Stoker on Zoom. Yeah, let me, uh, let me give you an update. And David, thank you for joining us here. We appreciate this. So, as you know, uh, at our last meeting, you received a copy of the legal opinion dated March 22nd. It's in your packets there. Uh, from Bonnie Tosky, which is a partner in the law firm. And several questions, points of clarification came forward. And so we actually set up a meeting with the uh, treasurer, the uh, register of deeds, the clerk, and myself, with Mr. Stoker and Ms. Tosky. It was a telephone call just to try to get more answers, which we said we'd do at our last meeting. So we did that. And then I thought uh, this is a very complex issue. And so I thought it'd be helpful to have David join us. So thank you once again, David, for joining us here. And uh, let me try to kind of walk you through it. And uh, John and Jen, if you have any comments or questions, feel free. Well, on the sheriff key, so also just want to have a dialogue. So the issue surfaced last January about the pay for the chief deputies, and it, uh, that means the uh, chief deputies for the clerk, register of deed, treasurer. It also impacts the sheriff, the undersheriff, and the chief uh, assistant prosecutor. They're all elect officials, and they have uh, either chief deputies or second in command or undersheriff. So the question came up, and I'm trying to try to walk you through it, and David, I'm sure, will do a great job explaining this. So when it comes to elected officials, uh, during the term of office, so currently that'd be January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2025. Four. I'm sorry, 24, yes. Thank you. Yes. 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 Uh, those salaries are set, and if there's a resignation in any of those people, the person coming in has to be at the same salary. One of the points that Mr. Stoker and Ms. Toski pointed out is uh, we may have a legal issue with our chart where we have people start and then we have year one, year two, year three, year four. Mm -hmm. That's very rare for counties. Most counties have a set salary for it doesn't matter who's in the position. So if you're a sheriff, whether you have 10 years experience or one year experience, this is the salary. And that's true for all elected officials. The board does have the option prior to the new term to make adjustments downwards. They can make adjustments up at any time. So just like here, 
every year there's a cost of living. This year was 3.25. So all the elected officials are eligible to get that also. So if one of the elected officials resigns during that four year term of office, whoever gets appointed has to be at the same salary, even if they have no experience, for example. One of the things Mr. Stoker is recommending, and if you go to the last page here on this thing, is that we switch to a, a one-step salary for elected officials. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this proposal, these are the current salaries for the for the people that are elected, which is the drain commissioner, prosecutor, sheriff, clerk, treasurer, and register of deeds. The only one that is not at the top of the scale is the register of deeds because when her predecessor resigned, she was at the top of the scale. Jen came in and it was a step two. I came, in, two. I came in at one start. Yeah, because it was a new term, technically that's legal. Uh, so as registered deeds, you came in at 69,108? Yeah. Jen, do you want me to jump in? Yeah, I was just going to turn it over to you. God gave an overview. Yeah. Okay. So everyone but the register of deeds came in and is at the top of the scale currently with the exception of Jen. And so, David, do you want to talk about your okay. concern about our step system here? And what, what the statute, the, now while your system makes sense, is not consistent with statutes. That's where the problem arises. Uh, the statute for uh, sending uh, county officer positions, and that would be the elected and the chief deputy, there actually could be some other people in their office, but the main ones we're dealing with here are the, the chiefs of the race office and offices and the officials. The statute provides that uh, the board of commissioners is to annually set their salary each November. Uh, so it's essentially saying it's supposed to be done in year to year. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, Jed is correct that both the statute and the Constitution says that uh, you cannot then reduce the salary during the uh, term of office. That has been interpreted by both the courts and the uh, Michigan Attorney General as mean that you cannot, uh, when you would basically have a vacancy for your resignation or death or whatever uh, in any of these offices, you cannot reduce it from the level it's at. So the statute really envisions an annual salary being set, uh, and then in the end that it's going to be a salary, and rather than uh, a step system. And again, uh, if you're like uh, the treasurer is at the top step, uh, if John Vincolato leaves tomorrow, the replacement would have to uh, be uh, at the same salary he had. And you can't reduce it until the beginning of the next term. So that you know, that, uh, that affects a couple of things the way you've done it. Uh, it affects the steps uh, in that you can't put the person, even if they is the first year back to step one level, they need to continue the replacement at the level that the person left with, at least until the beginning of the next term, in this case, until January 2025. Okay, David. Um, again, it's, it's to be set annually, annually. So then, what you do a uh, second year, third year, fourth year, you you can set it where you want as long as it's not going down. So, David, our cost of oh, I'm sorry. So, our every year, sometimes we do in November, sometimes in December, we do uh, adjustment. Uh, this year was 3.25. That's perfectly legal. The board has a right to adjust those salaries up on an annual basis. Yeah, what the statute says is that you're supposed to do it uh, each November, but the courts have held that you can move it up as many times and any time you want. So essentially, they, the courts have re essentially rewritten the statute, if you will. And, and so if you can go up at any time, you can never move down, at least until the beginning of the next year. Okay. That's sort of the, the ground rules we have to deal with. 
And that obviously creates a problem when you have a step system. Yeah. Uh, because you, you sort of create a step system saying this is the salary for the next uh, for the full term, for the next four years. But you can't tie it to how many years they've been with us. Uh, it's, uh, and you um, can't reduce it if a new person comes in from what was being paid when the person was Okay, could you address no. the Register of Deeds situation? Her, the current Register of Deeds came in at year two. The prior Register of Deeds was at the top of the scale. However, as I understand, that was legitimate because the board made the adjustment at the end of the previous budget year. So when Jen took office on January 1st, 2021, that adjustment was made during the budget process, and that legally is fine, technically? Chief, you said the right. chief. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, not the chief. I'm sorry. Chief. I, I meant the register of deeds, yeah. The, no, the chief register of deeds. Well, we have a register of deeds, and we have... Register of deeds. Yes. Too. Yes. I came in from the start. Yeah. Because of new term. Yes. Yeah, that was the beginning of the terms. We were okay reducing it at that point from what was being paid to the prior one. Um, but you can never go down from that. You right. can go up from that. Yeah. And you sort of create us, you know, basically you adopted a scale going up every year now. You can't lower that scale, though you can raise that scale at any time. Okay. The statute does not envision steps, it envisions a um, annual salary being reviewed in second year. First of all, I guess you actually do the budget process. Okay. Um, but it's essentially suggesting you do that here. Let's stop here. Do the three commissioners have any questions about that? So basically what you're recommending that we do is we modify our non-unit pay scale and for the elected officials have one salary step, correct, David? Yes, and then you would each year you would need to, and I guess normally you would do that as part of the budget process. Yeah. yeah. We then review it. You know, and even though it says November, the only caveat I would have with that uh, is that I think it's probably a good practice when you do get to the end of the term to try to set that salary before people finally nominate. Yeah. So when they when they get elected, they know what they're getting what they're getting in for basically. Technically, the statute doesn't say that. It says November be sure. Well, I think going forward, since we have three-year labor contracts, we usually make the salary adjustment during the budget process. So I'm guessing in 2020, for the 2023 budget and 2024 budget, since we have labor contracts, those adjustments will be made during the budget process and approved in October. So I think we're we're fine there. But what you're recommending? That will be the next term for you guys. The new commissioners, yes. Lots of time Yeah, but as of now. Which is basically, if I can summarize, is that all elected officials, if you look at the last page here, that was this, we have a revised salary based on what David's telling us, with one salary for all the elected officials. Right now, I just want to hold that out here. Yeah, you, you have it. You should. I, it's I under the minutes. Did you get your minutes? I had the minutes from that were sent out, but I didn't get that. Oh, oh okay. okay. I thought you did. I thought I put them on the desk. Maybe I didn't. Thank you. So really the only question there is the register of deeds here because currently she is not at the top of the pay scale. Legally where she at is technically fine but she's not at the top of the pay scale so until uh, in the past always the register of deeds, the clerk and the treasurer have been on the same compensation scale. Mm -hmm. But because we have veteran members at the clerk and the treasurer's office as the elected officials, they are getting paid 75701, where the register of deeds is at 7797. So the option is you could legally keep her at the 7797. You could also move her to the top is where the prior register of deeds was. At 75, and she'd be 75, 701, 57. Is there, are, okay. are you saying that all elected officials then would be at the same? No, they'd be where they at now. Okay. Yeah, if you look at this, this is where they all are okay. upset with the register of deeds. Gotcha. She's well, the only one. We have some disparities. We have, yeah. we're talking about 
if you look at the three, which for some reason they're they're long, the clerk register a deed and the treasurer have a, that's what Chet's saying. Have the, been the same. The, the rest are separate. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the prosecutor used to be, but some years ago they they raised that up, so he's he's way up there. And then um, and I was the sheriff also at one time the the same. I remember that got it got raised up at one point when the under sheriff was making more than the sheriff or something. So that got raised up. I know, but maybe he wasn't the same. So those three. And what we have is, is the disparity because Jen started at start yeah. instead of. If you take the person out higher. of it, this register of deeds is making less than the prior register of deeds. Right. In several years, right. this register would, would be at the same, but not currently. Happened in the past with the So to, too. to modify the pay for the elected officials to one step would not impact anyone except for the register of deeds. So legally, you have a choice of keeping her where she is now, or you can move her to the top of the pay scale would be at the same as the clerk and the treasurer, which has been the case for many years. So, but I have a question, David. When you said this has to be set annually, technically it is. When we do our budget, we get this form and we review where everybody is and then we re re approve our budget in October. So yeah. technically, I guess we we are setting them annually. But we're using the step process, which you say isn't the best way to go. Yeah, for example, if, as David pointed out, let's just, I mean, it doesn't matter. Let's just say the uh, treasurer did win the lotto and left. Mm -hmm. Whoever is appointed as a treasurer during his term has to be at the top of the, has to be at the same salary as the current treasurer. And that holds true for every elected official. They can't be put at start one or step two or step three. They have to start at the top. So it really does make sense that we eliminate it. Basically, you treat them the same as you do the administrator. For the administrator, there are no steps. This is a salary. You have made a decision every year to give the administrator the same amount as you did everybody else. Legally, you don't have to do that. Just what the elect officials, you could pass a motion giving everyone the 3.25% and not give it to the elected officials, which right. is perfectly legal. Right. You just can't lower it. The courts have said that the uh, salary goes to the position, not the person in the position. So the tying into years of service uh, is where the problem is. You, you always have flexibility going up. You can't go down. You can't go down. Not, it's not tied to the person, but the position. Okay. You so know, the classic case way back in World War II, there was I think it was a uh, treasurer actually who uh, got elected and promptly signed up for the military and went overseas for two years. He, he, I guess he wrote a few letters and contacted them, and then came back and said, and of course the commissioners didn't pay him. He wasn't there. Uh, he came back and said, where's my salary? And the court said, yeah, it goes to the position. He was still pressured. He gets the money. And so it's really tied to the position, not the person in the position, except you can reset that position each beginning of each term. And then after that, the same principle applies to the two deputies that don't show. Okay. Yeah, so I, we'll talk about those later. So yeah. I'll keep those. Separate. Well, I think I, I think we understand. Do we are we okay to move on after, about? Because I think we have to we we'll have to figure this out. We know what the first yeah. issue is. Yeah. No, okay. No, so in simple terms, because I know we have a time crunch, our recommendation is that you put all the elected officials on one salary step, and you okay. need to make a decision on the board about the rest of these. There's a I think an ethics fairness situation until. This year it has always been the same, the same steps, but because for being new. Because what David, if I understand what you're saying, David, is that Jen should have started at 75, 701, same as where the last register left. No, is because that? we passed the budget with this, and she's new. Okay. And because she's new. Be, okay. If she would have taken. Even less, though we used the step system to set that, it's okay. Well, but we should get rid of it, but. I get it. But, but if Dorothy would have resigned on. Uh, 
January 15, 20, 2021, oh, wow. for example. Okay. December 15th. Well, I'll just pick a date. Yeah, I just, okay. She if she would have resigned during the third term of office, then it would be whoever was appointed had to be the same pay and you could not have reduced it. So, okay. very so, simple okay. terms. Chuck, can I say something too? Yes, you go ahead. You also want to look at the fact that the scale, when I was uh, elected in 20, this scale was in place and I had a potential to make that amount by the end of my term so can that even be reduced because can that be can that scale be changed can that amount be lowered since when i was elected that potential to make that what was at the top scale i would be at the top scale can it be reduced within my term did you hear that david does that make sense I, I okay, let me try and help. It and help. So let's just use, I don't want to pick on people, but you're a great example. So when Jen ran in 2020, she knew what the starting pay was. She knew what the four-year rate was. She came in at year two, I believe, but knowing that after... No, we started her at one. Year one. Yeah, okay, so year two now. Start. Okay. She knew what her four-year potential was. Right now, she's not at the top of that four-year scale. If the board legally, as I understand, the board has the right to keep her where she is now. However, her potential is less than she thought it was going to be when she ran for the office if we we're, were to eliminate the steps. Why is that? Because your potential is 75. Yeah, but I'm saying she right now is making legally you could keep her at 70. she's below the potential yeah that's but the question I, i'm not sure that's true because I, they actually did adopt that scale i don't think you can reduce it going forward on okay the steps now. okay so steps. for her you hire oh them, i see what you're saying yeah. you're saying if we get rid of steps yeah we can't you still have to give her the steps. You still have to, give, still her have her to the give her the steps. Each yeah. budget, yeah. each yes. budget year, it would be yeah. adjusted. So she steps. could, you could so adjust her right now. Steps. Yeah. Right. So you have but two right. options. One is put all of the elected officials at their current salary, eliminate all steps, keep the rest of her deeds with the steps until she hits the top, or you can adjust her at now to get her to the top and eliminate all steps. Okay, I understand what you're saying, right. but is David yeah. saying we can keep steps for the register of deeds since we had them in place when uh, she... Until she gets a top. You're supposed to do it annually, but essentially, I think you're in, because you adopted the scale stretching out into the future, you're in a position to do it annually. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 We would go lower. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone's saying we should go lower. Right. It's whether how long it takes her to get to the top. Okay. I guess that's my yeah. In simple terms, you could eliminate the steps immediately oh. if you made if you put her on the top, or you can keep you could eliminate steps for all the elected officials okay. with the exception of register deeds, and in uh, two okay. years she'd okay. be at the top. All right, as long as we're okay, okay, we know okay. we're okay with whatever we choose to do okay. then on Jen. So, okay. everyone understand? Yep, sure. on that position. The treasurer, clerk, and the sheriff, they've got the same pay? No. no. No, no, they stay where they are. Okay, so, all right. Yeah. Okay. Tre yeah, okay. Treasurer and clerk are the same right now, and the top step for the register deeds yeah. is the same as Yeah, the two. only potential change in anyone's salary, if we limit the steps, would be the register deeds. Okay, all right. Okay, so we're, we're set up on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. And let's go now to the undersheriff. So as you know, Steve Morgan did a great job here as undersheriff. He resigned February of last year, correct? Right. Right. Yes, yes. At that point, uh, Jim Kiso was named the undersheriff. Because we had steps, the decision was made to put Mr. Kiso not at the same salary as Mr. Morgan was making. Okay. So Mr. Morgan, when he retired, was at the top of the scale. Okay. When Jim came in, he was put on step one. Two, well, step, not 
step one, I guess. Yeah, step one. Step one. Step one. Okay. So when this issue surfaced, the question was asked, okay, was that legal? And I believe David, you're saying it was not. That because Mr. Morgan retired in the middle of the term, gotcha. Mr. Okay. Kiesel or whoever was appointed to that should have been should at the same the amount top. as as uh, Mr. Morgan. Correct, David? That is correct. Okay. Okay. So does that does that mean then we have not only the justice but back pay issues? Uh, I will say that I don't want to speak on Mr. Kiesel and I did briefly talk uh, there's no court case I think Mr. Kiesel would be agreeable to just making the adjustment going oh, forward. I thought you were going to say delighted for renter. I won't say delighted. <laughs> Not delighted. I guess that decision you as a board need to make. We need to make that decision well, I, too. I, I okay. don't speak on your behalf. He was say that. I think since it's our mistake we I mean, that's a decision. Yeah. Go ahead. I would like to comment since Commissioner Rushton just said it was our mistake. Right. I want to be very clear about this. It was noted to the proper people that he was to go to the top of the scale. There was no mistake. It was a, it was a no decision. I made it very clear he was to go to the top of the scale. And those that were in charge would not agree. I think it was the lack of knowledge. We did not know that at that point. And I can understand okay. where the sheriff and other sheriff were okay. coming from. But, all right, I understood. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Because, but. Did I put it in writing? Yeah, to a memo to the sheriff. I spoke to the administrator and to the uh, sheriff. The, the offer letter comes from the elected official. The offer letter to Mr. Kiso came from the sheriff and the sheriff of that pay scale. And I understand we're at any rate, but anyway, it was Steve it, Morgan's we, decision. I mean, I, I understand Steve was here for many years. Was it we had a it, we, we did, did not know the scale scale had legal issues. The decision was made to put him. Jim agreed on it and we moved forward until we found out just recently that uh, it's not proper. It. So, so, but, but Le we, we got to look at this as, as Leelanau County and a position. Yes. So, so we have two things to look at here. One is, sounds like pretty easy. We have to move the under sheriff position up to the top. And what I told them that, assume you agree, we put this on the May agenda to make that correction. And then make the a other question would be is is whether we do retro and maybe we should talk to David later about that. Okay. All right. So. All right. Jim, do you want to add anything? I don't want to speak on your behalf here. No, Jim. No, I, I want. I would like to rectify it. Obviously, yeah. fix that error. As far as the retro, obviously, I'm not going to say I wouldn't like to see that fixed. You know. Whether it was known or unknown, obviously, we would have okay. made that pretty clear. You know, if I was entitled that 14 months ago, I feel that probably should be rectified too. I'm not saying I'm going to take action, but obviously, if it should have been done then and it was not done properly at that point, at this point, maybe it should be. Okay, thank you. Okay. I Next think it was you. a lack of understanding in the law when it comes yeah. on with the second in command of the elected officials until uh well we've had this step pro did we've had yeah, this step for years and we have never heard yeah. that we shouldn't be using it for elected well, officials well until the issue with the I, chief exactly, clerk exactly position came up that's the first time i heard that I, I knew about elected officials i did not know about chief deputies or second in commands nor did anyone ever bring up the issues of, of the steps right it's good to know. Like in, in the sheriff's office specifically, we've had we've had changeover. We've had different under sheriffs, but it's always happened at a turn. Yeah. Okay. So there were yep. the issues would be similar to Jen's, not this specific issue where the under sheriff left midterm. So this one is kind of unique. It's been quite some time since we've changed under sheriff. Yep. Midterm. Yep. Good point. Okay. To, to a question though, I I understand for elected officials, but our appointing appointments of elected officials subject to the same rules same. as elected officials 
their deputies. Yes, as well as as well as appointments to the chief deputies, which are considered chief deputies, office, not just deputies, so but chief appointments deputies. and elected are, are treated the same. A number of court cases in attorney general comes on that. So just as a FYI, this hasn't happened at least since I'm here. If an elected official resigns or whatever leaves office middle term, there's a commission appointment that's composed of help you out, Michelle. For the um, county clerk and prosecutor, if they leave or retire midterm, the appointments by the circuit court judges for the office of county treasurer, county register of deeds and sheriff it is handled by the probate judge, the prosecuting attorney, and the county clerk. For the remainder of that term. So are we clear on that, yep. Mr. Yep. Batters? I think so. Okay. Uh, then let's go to the Chief Deputy Register of Deeds and the Chief uh, Deputy for the Treasurer Office. Uh, those are hourly position currently, as you know. Uh, we talked last time about switching them to uh, salary. We did get a legal opinion here that uh, basically the same law apply to those chief deputy positions as a, to the elect officials and the under sheriff too. We just have different titles, but they're second in command. I, uh, I think these are professional opinions or professional positions. Uh, and we met internally, and I think it's the uh, recognition of the treasurer and the register of deeds that the chief deputies be switched to salary also eliminating the steps because the same issue comes forward with the chief deputies as it does for the uh, as it does for the elected officials in terms of steps so let me just run off these numbers currently the chief deputies for the treasurer and the rest of the deeds make approximately just under forty nine thousand dollars per year they're hourly but those two offices have historically not had overtime or hours beyond 35. So just under 49,000 is the average. The average worker in those offices uh, makes them approximately 42,000 per year. And the elected official makes approximately 75,000 if they're at the top of the pay scale. So we looked at what would be fair based on the fact that uh, that uh, if they were to go to salary positions, uh, they do take a risk taking on those jobs. Those are at will. If there's a change in the elected official, the chief deputy, there's no job guarantee. They could be let go at any time with no reason. And so they do take a risk. They are, they have, do have more authority. Uh, for example, if the clerk is gone, or the register of deeds is gone, or the treasurer is gone. The number two person does have legal authority on certain issues to go forward. Uh, this got surfaced originally in the register of deeds uh, when Jen took over. Her new chief register of deeds was making 12 cents an hour more than the other people in the office. That's currently. Currently. So she would have had to take a pay cut yes. in order to take the position. Yeah. So currently, there's only 12 cents difference here. But that person basically gave up their uh, job security and has taken on extra mm -hmm. duties. So we thought, what would be a fair solution? And then we found out the issue of the steps. So what we're thinking would be fair is not have steps anymore, what we talked about last time, but simply set a straight salary of 56,941. And we based that on step the beginning scale of the chief emergency management director if you look at that pay scale originally we had we had steps there so what we're doing is a straight recommendation of uh, 56,941 and get rid of steps and that means they would not be eligible for extra compensation if they were working hours beyond 35 hours a week and David, uh, it is legally to convert them from hourly to salary based on the, co the compensation is not reduced, correct? Yeah, and, and it, it gets tricky because obviously hourly and you get ten and a half over, uh, over 40, which is what we've been doing, is possible if you worked it out overtime, you could be making more 
and then the next year with less overtime, or even just less hours, you make less, you would have reduced their salary. Yeah. Um, which, which we'll talk about the clerk, and that's why I'm, we're keeping the chief deputy clerk out of this discussion. Right. Because historically, the uh, register deeds chief deputy and the treasurer chief deputy have not worked overtime. So their, their, their pay on an annual basis has been pretty consistent. But in theory, it's possible there too. That's why we suggest a single salary yeah. and not have any problem. So once again, we eliminate the steps, go to salary versus hourly, so, as David suggested, and make it the 56.941. So the 56, uh, we don't have that issue with overtime from last year. This is more than what the... The, yeah. uh, and those the people have not worked over yet, and it's more than those. Yeah, I, we're not talking okay. about the clerk's office yet. No, I understand, but I didn't know if we had any overtime no. issues in either of these two offices. No. Okay. Okay. Does that make? Does make everyone sense? understand? So we'll look at that. Yeah, I'm no. not asking to and endorse just, at this point. I just you just to... now did you just arbitrarily? It's not arbitrary. I shouldn't have said that, but you just picked that number based on where a couple other starting salaries. Well, we are. looked at the chief deputy for the emergency management, and if you look at the pay scale that's in this packet, the previous chart yeah. there. If you look at the uh, Assistant Director for 911. Assistant there are steps. Yeah. So that person starts Start at the 56941 okay. and then goes to the 603097. 60, Once again, we don't want to compare people and individuals and jobs, but no, we felt at least the three of us. Let's say the three of them, there was some overtime there. We can explore that in the budget and make adjustments there. Okay. Well, if we change up the salary, there'll be no need. Salary is salary. Okay. But if there were, say, yeah. there was. But in the register of deeds, yeah, and the, been, in the past okay. years, in the register of deeds office and the treasurer office, there was no overtime, so no there is no issue there. Okay. Okay, yes, Josh? Common on the 56, though it seem arbitrary, I've had my vacancy posted for approximately two weeks. With the range of 49,000 as a starting rate, and I received one applicant. Okay. So that's because John. I think that mean that if it were start, if it were a set salary of 56, you would get more applicants. I'm hoping. But I think there's a respect issue in terms of those jobs too. I think they're professional jobs. They're not hourly jobs. I mean, I, I value what our hourly workers pay. But these people do have extra duties, responsibilities, and a no job security. At any point, any of these okay. elected officials could decide they want to change in that personnel and let these people go. Pushing the rewind button, we were talking earlier on the you know, young sheriff and the chief deputies. I know, I don't know what your situation is, but it used to be when you went to under sheriff, you could negotiate bump back. Do you have bump back? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, can you do the same for the chief deputy clerks if they take that position? Yeah, it's not in the contract. There's no bump back. There. Okay, so it's not like the ownership. No. Never heard well, bump back, so I didn't think so. in the command contract. They allow a position. When I left there, I could take a position outside should something fall through. Other than this one, I could bump back. Right. And I believe there's a time. Oh, okay, they go back to that. They never did put the time. Oh, they did? Okay. No, right. that's not part of the Teamsters contract. Okay. The other office people are covered by the Teamsters contract. Okay. So when the decision was made, for example, Jen's chief deputy, when she left her former job to become chief register of deeds, she gave up the right to come back. Okay. Check in the, in the Teamsters contract in this building, there is no bump back bump out. Oh, yeah. I actually thought about it. It used to be the end sheriff had to make a deal with. The union, yeah, and that's not the union had to agree. Yeah. But even if a even if a teamster's employee comes out and goes from one office to another office, and if there's layoff, there is no bumping back into the other offices. The elected right. officials wouldn't sign off on um, employees bumping back and taking out one of their employees. Right. Okay. So that's in good. simple term, the average worker in the register of deeds and the treasurer's office makes approximately forty-two thousand. Mm -hmm. We are recommending the uh, 56000 for the chief deputies. The elected officials make 75000 So we thought that's 
enough of a range. We said we all, I think, agree that the 12 cent difference is not fair. Okay. And I think they are professional positions. And actually, when Dave and I first started talking about it, he was on the assumption that these were salary positions. So we had to have a second call because the assumption was made because, uh, at least based on my information, most of the counties have these people as salary one step position. And David, it's I don't just want to confirm one more time, if we were to switch these two positions from hourly to the proposed salary, uh, there are no legal issues. And you would recommend that we just have one step for these positions. Now, I think you've got, where you're putting it is a number gap. Yeah. Again, technically you've got to look at what happened this term, which was really only last year, yeah. the first year of the term. Yeah. So what we know was the overtime was last year, so there's really not an issue with reducing it. Yeah. Uh, in real dollar values, but then the question is, are you reducing it potential-wise? They had a ton of overtime this year, which they've not traditionally had. Uh, would would they be getting less? Historically, these positions have not had much overtime. You've got enough of a gap there that I don't see that as a potential. Issue. Okay. So, thank you. I think uh, where you're uh, suggesting is a uh, is legal decision. Any questions? Okay. Three commissioners on that? Yeah, I accept that one. Yep. Okay. All right. Like I said, these are kind of complicated issues. That's what we're trying to. And I thought it was really helpful to have David here answer it. So, okay, this is probably the most complicated is the chief deputy clerk. And this is what kind of spurred this dialogue and the legal opinion. And once again, let's just take names out, names out of this. So in 2021, which is the first year of the four year term, for many reasons, there was substantial overtime in that position, and that chief deputy clerk, I believe, grossed approximately sixty-eight thousand dollars last year. Is that a fair, Michelle? Approximately. Yeah. All right. So the question is, when she left that position, and a new person came in, what's the pay scale, and where are they placed, and what can we legally do? Because she is the chief deputy, and David, help me address this. You're saying, though, even the pay scale was the same for the chief clerk as it was for the chief deputy treasurer and the chief deputy register of deeds, because that chief deputy clerk worked substantial overtime in 2021, whoever is in that position cannot be reduced going forward? Yeah, essentially, you need to look Roughly out what happened in the W 2 last year, which was the first year of the term, uh, and you can't reduce the salary during the term, regardless of who feels, whether it's someone experienced or someone on the street. Uh, so essentially, you, you lock yourself in on that, which is one of the problems of trying of having an hourly basis and paying overtime. You know, by its nature, that fluctuates, and um, and you can fluctuate up. Legally, which can't fluctuate back down once you do, and that that's creates the problem. Um, you, in this case, though, you only have to really look back one year because that was the first year of the term. You can't reduce it during the term, so you can't make it lower than it was last year, uh, but you can't make it higher. Uh, and, and again, the statute itself itself calls for salary doesn't define salary, but it implies it's going to be salary, not hourly as well. So I, I think uh, I, I think that doing a single step that you then look at each year uh, is probably a, a prudent thing to do. It. So really, because it was the first year of the term, 2021, and because the person in that job worked substantial over, overtime and made 68000 that's the standard for the next four years going forward, for the next three years going forward, through December 31st of 2024, correct? Yes, and that's regardless of whoever holds that position. I have a, Internal, a, external, whatever. a question on that. Um, last year, the deputy clerk also was responsible for accounting. That was responsive. That's one of the reasons she got overtime. If that accounting function leaves that position, 
uh, we're still legally obligated to pay as much as we paid in overtime last year, even if she didn't need overtime. The, the answer would be yes. Now, there is some flexibility in, in advance. You can, if it's work that's outside of the normal function, I'm not sure this was outside the normal function by the statutes, but if it was outside of the normal function and you have a written agreement in advance, you could then drop that payment on that extra work, of right. work outside of the normal job, drop the payment. We didn't do that here. We basically, I, I think we did do that actually with the work commission, but we didn't with the uh, chief deputy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it essentially became part of their job. So could you do that? Uh, normally I wouldn't recommend you do that, but potentially legally, legally you could have, but didn't. So David, as you well know, the board created two new positions. One is the human resource director, one is the finance director. And the board made the adjustment to transfer the accounting from the clerk's office to the administrative office uh, as of this year. But because it was in last year in the clerk's office and uh, the chief deputy worked there, plus other duties, election, courts, and so forth, that person made approximately 68,000. Even with the removal of the accounting functions from the clerk's office, the chief deputy salary through December 2024 has to stay at that 68,000 range. I, I think you've locked yourself in by okay. more and okay. I, I understand it wasn't just the clerk's office that was accounting No, no, right. no, right. we had some people on the, we had some people that had medical yeah, leaves. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask this question. <laughs> okay, can the board make adjustments in some of the chief deputies and not the other ones? For example, could the board keep uh, switch the register of deeds deputy and the uh, treasurer's deputy to salary and keep the chief deputy clerk's exact where it is hourly? Based on this information, you could. I think it's a clear method, and then obviously be having unknown. Uh, you're actually in a dilemma because of the way you've done it. Uh, if, uh, but. if you in fact did that, left left this one hourly, and then they work less hours and have less overtime this year, did you reduce their salary? Yeah. Yes. If they work. Um, and if you look around and you set it as a salary that's fixed, and they would have paid more hourly if you pay them less as well. So if you kind of created a, a catch 22, I think the safer method is to use what the statutes envision, which is setting a fixed salary mm -hmm. or uh, position that's not less than last year. Okay, let me ask one final question because this has been brought up too. Obviously, the board sets the uh, personnel levels at each office, sets the, sets the budget, sets the overtime. Does the board have the right to reduce the amount of overtime hours budgeted in these offices? For example, you use this example, and this question has been brought up, and I know we, we talked about it. Does the board have the right to reduce the amount of overtime budgeted to the clerk's office? Yeah. And how would that impact this person? It's clearly a budget item, and then the question comes down and becomes a mandated function of what you do. And, and I think you, you do need to keep in mind that this is an election year, which I, I would have expected that this year would be the high one that I want rather than last year, actually, uh, because of the election. So can you say you can't work the election? Probably not. Um, it, it creates some dilemmas. Uh, by going salary, though, you end up yeah. uh, having a fixed dollar amount, which I think is probably a little safer. So the question was asked, and I want to bring it up here for everyone, does the board have the right to reduce the overtime and then force the clerk to appoint other people in her office to work the extra hours at a lower salary or lower pay rate? As long as the elected offices have minimally, not optimally, performed the required functions, 
you, the board, has the authority to set the budget. So again, the budget is But that's all. But that's really budget. all we do, right? I mean, it's up to say the sheriff to schedule his overtime and the clerk schedule yeah. her overtime yeah. and yeah. yeah, I don't think at least it. No, the question was asked. That's why I brought it up. Oh, okay. All sorry. right. So, Jerry, who asked that question about wanting to reduce the overtime and scheduling of different people in the clerk's office? I didn't hear. I asked that question. That was brought, that was brought to me as to ask Mr. Do, do you know who brought that forward? Well, I'm not going to say this before you forward. Okay. So that would but I think be, all of us needs to have that answer. So really, it's the elected official's decision how that budget is set and who gets those hours. And the elected official can make a case that, well, because of the election or someone on a family medical leave or for whatever reason, that person has the right to assign people to them. Or it may be skills. Or it could be skills, yes. Yep. Okay. All right. So I... I, I think sure we're we pretty. I think that, we have a safer. The board really does not have much authority on that. You, you use word safer. I think I kind of like that as we move forward. Okay. Which All is right. another reason why Any this position should be salary. Uh, yeah. We uh, thank you, David, for that. I'm understanding that better. So, um, any more questions on this one? So, based on that, and help me out here, Michelle. If you look historically, the Chief Deputy Clerk has worked approximately 40 hours, at least 40 hours a week Correct. for the last number of years. It's very based on election, based on who's on medical leave, office turnover. But historically, as I understand, the Chief Deputy Clerk has worked 40 hours per week. Correct? Correct. Every one of my offices is working extra. Yeah. And but no, 40 hours per week, yeah. and actually 2021 was 142 hours less than 2019. Because remember in 2019, we had ransomware and was running court work remotely off of iPhones mm -hmm. because none of our computers were working and we were doing double the work, yeah. keeping up with the court. So, but yes, to your question, it's, it's averages. So if you look at that, the fact that historically, and once again, this is not on one individual, the clerk, the chief deputy clerk, for many years has worked more than the 35 hours. The other chief deputies, they're all were based on 35 hours work week. You look at historically, the other offices have stayed with it with the exception of the clerk, which has averaged at least 40 hours per week. If you look at the legal opinion we have, based on what the chief deputy clerk was making last year, which is, I'll just say 68,000. It appears that if we wish to switch to salary, we don't have much choice but to set it at $68,000. If you, you don't have to do it, however, you keep it hourly, it appears that that person has to make at least 68,000 because that was the standard set in 2021, which is the first year of the four year election cycle. Is that a fair statement, David? Yes. Yeah. And I just want to say, no one is saying reducing the overtime from the clerk's office. That was a question that was brought up. I wanted all of you to have the answer. No. Hopefully, hopefully we're, it'll be reduced anyway. This is really a, this is really a good deal to go to salary on this position. And um, as same as the others, any of the deputy positions, I think it's a really good idea. We've been pushing for that. Um, but we, added another position too and that's going to help with overtime we hope this year if you're successful filling that position well i'll give you an example i've got a new person in there will be fully back up to staffed we should be clerking about 32 meetings per year just for the board of commissioners wow. as of the end of april we will be at 30. end of april 30 meetings we haven't even gotten to budget so four times what you expected to be clerking. Mm -hmm. And we have huge, huge, huge traffic flow. Not a complaint. It's just it's just the way it is. I've got everyone working extra hours. I have over the past years had employees that would refuse to work extra. They made it very clear. They're nine to five. There are no nights. There are no weekends. And that's fine. So what that's our choice. The budget? What can we do to help you? We're just going to keep plopping forward. Since I've been here, it just keeps, you know, we're not doing self-reliance. We're not doing 
on staff to him where he can't get this. You have. You've given me the, the, the new position, and I think that will help. Um, and we'll just we'll just see where we are. If I think there needs to be adjustments, but the clerk's office is di is different than others. Well, I know that. The yeah. Sheriff's department's different too. They have a lot of overtime too. Yeah, but they have more people. Yeah. True. All right. True. Yeah, and the okay. under sheriff has always been salary. Well, as long as I can remember, it's always Correct. been salary. So that. I mean, I'm going to be open, Michelle. I mean. I'm not going to tell you how you do your job. You do a great job, but it's a little confusing from going into the government world, the private world business, and where I come from, I look at a chief deputy clerk or under sheriff for supervision. It's the workers who are supposed to get the overtime and be doing the work. I have I have workers getting overtime and lots yeah, of overtime. But it just seems like I've never been in a situation where I've seen a supervisor make so much overtime, so much more than the workers. It's always been work. It's because when your salary people work. They don't get compensated for their extra hours. But you're the only one salary. That's correct. I don't get any extra compensation for working 65 hours a week. I think Rick, you're talking about the other people in the clerk's office, right? Correct. Right. The other people. Yes. They are all. They're all earning extra. Okay. They're all. I'm well, happy you did to approve a new hours. position, and you are. Well, this week you're fully staffed. You have someone going on FLMA next week. But as of this I, week, you are. The new person you have filled a new position. I, I think it's just it's just lack of understanding of the duties. We're working. But the good is you are at least you have yeah. your, your staff. Now. Your your elected officials, most of them are working elected officials here. Your chiefs, your under sheriff, they're working. They're not just sitting back and pushing the paper and saying you do this, you do that. They're they're involved in in every I, aspect you know, I, of it. No, I understand. Yeah. I, don't, I don't I don't want to get yeah. involved. I don't want to tell you how to run your office. Yeah. You know, it's just it just. Like I said, to see, it'd be like going to the sheriff's department and seeing Jim get all the overtime over there and the deputies aren't getting anything. That's what, how I look at it from seven. Oh, well, seven. You, you would probably then want to get a review of who actually is earning overtime throughout the whole complex. Well, I did ask for that. I was getting it every month, but then I just it was broke down where I couldn't really understand it, and I was told that was intentional. Um, oh, I don't know why who would say it would be intentional. We'll be glad to sit down with you. I think. Yeah, I think Anyone you could sit, you could sit down. You could sit down and you could get it per employee. Um, and you're right. It's just uh, you know. Th those kind of those I mean, kind yeah, of comments sat down aren't and, helpful. If you can, we probably all understand. Yeah. It's just yeah. like I explained last night with Mr. Price. Yeah, we were two different parties, but when we talked, we became. Yeah, that's good. And it's, it doesn't happen here. That, that's very good. I'd be happy to sit down any time and discuss yeah, information um, to have. over I mean, time. We should always receive those types of reports and decipher them. So um, do we need uh, Mr. Stoker for this next? Well, no, I was going to say, uh, well, the only other one is what the administrator's assistant. That is not uh, tied into these election laws. You have the right to adjust that anyway. There's no issues there. That's a different thing. But I just thought it'd be very helpful to have David here for these because these are very complex okay. issues. Do you have an opinion on this last position, Mr. Stoker? It's my assistant, David. For the executive assistant, we have is she at twenty six four now? So or where is she at? that position has been at the same level as the Chief Deputy for the Rest or Deeds and the Chief Deputy for the Treasurer. If you look at the pay scale, it's exactly the same. And if we're going to make changes, I would say to keep that fair. That is a very important position, especially with a new administrator coming on board. And once again, if we're going to get rid of overtime or anything, make that salary. She has worked beyond 35 hours a week on a regular basis, not many times over 40 for overtime. But between 35 and 40, especially all the Zoom meetings and everything going on, and the evening meetings and so forth, she traditionally is over the 35 hours a week. But if you look at that position, the uh, administrative assistant for the administrator, the chief deputy register of deeds, and the chief deputy treasurer have been paid the same. And I think some. Wait, value. back back up, because you're going a little bit fast on those. So the the. Um, we got to go back to our old yeah, chart. Yeah, if you look at the current pay scale, 
Yep, just a second. Let me find the executive. Where did she? Okay, up there. She was at 26.74. Which is the same as the same chief as the Resident chief deputy, deputy treasurer, and chief the, deputy yeah, clerk, and um, okay, the executive assistant and senior services coordinator. Okay. You see, I'm saying so. That's always been the same. Okay. So I think this logic could make that a salary. She has worked more than 35 hours a week on a regular basis, especially the last couple of years. With all but the, the law doesn't come into play, correct? No, no, no. That's so a there's salary. No, yep. no, there's no. So we can, is, we, if we want it, we can either leave that salary or leave that hourly. That's up to you as a board. So um, is she getting overtime now? She makes some additional, yes. Some, some additional overtime? If, is she at the top of the scale? Yes. If she's at the top of the scale working 40 hours a week, that's 53.4. Per year, uh, yeah, uh, and she actually made about that much less. I don't, I honestly don't know how much she made, but it was not the 49 because of the extra hours. I think she made about 55 last year, and we can confirm that. Do you know? That's not, it's a 35 hour week. But she did have extra hours and some more time. I did not bring that. I believe it was. I'm close here. About 55 thousand last year. My, my only concern on these is, I, 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 and I support what we're doing, uh, but then I look at the court employees well, and yeah. some of the other staff, and, and I don't know where it ends. Yeah, that's, well, that's always the problem when you start doing that. I go back to a year ago, Ty. Um, you sat right here when uh, the prosecutor came down. When you mentioned that, we were opening a can of worms. <laughs> oh. Do we need David Stoker? Um, I was just going to say the very same thing because really we've gone away from what David is saying we, we need to perhaps repair or change. So is there anything else, Mr. Stoker, that we, we, sh we we've forgotten? Is there anything else we should be asking you? No, I think you've covered it. I, I, obviously the other conditions are you don't have the statutory and constitutional restrictions, so it's in your discretion. Let me most boards look at what's comparable and make it so you can keep the employee and, uh, and, and so uh, one of your other departments doesn't hire her way in one of these locked in conditions. She gets more pay over board somewhere else. But uh, essentially, the, uh, uh, it's in your discretion. Okay. Most counties look at you know, sort of the work levels and what's comparable. Before I let you go, so the restrictions we did on, on that we talked about earlier are not really part of, part of that. Before I let you go, are there any questions from the treasurer, the under sheriff, the rest of the needs of the clerk? I think she's she left. Any anything? No more. Okay. Thank well, thank you very much, David. We really appreciate this. Yes, thank you. You've been very helpful. Hey, anything else? Give us a call. Thank You're you. on my speed dial. <laughs> we all need you on speed dial. Yeah. Thank you very much, David. Okay. Thank you. So um, that brings us back to what Rick was just saying, and and I, and that also was my concern when we did that, when we did what we did last year, because well, number one, I thought we had perhaps a, a different alternate um, course to take than the one we did, but um, if. If we were to look at this one, because it's outside of what I'm going to say is the realm of these four, if our attorney suggested perhaps we better clean up these four, this fifth one is outside of those realms. So it's a question of do we want to leave it where it is and leave it hourly, hourly right now yes. at 2674, or do we want to make it salary? And we don't, we don't have to make it salary at least. So we do have a choice with this one. Um, and I guess it's in the, the range. If we do, are we going to start toppling like, like you said? Are we going to start, if we start look, if we go after this one, are we going to start having others? And what other ones, you know, are going to follow? Well, Ty is absolutely right. There is no easy way to do this. Once you start it, it opens up. I can make a very, Saw case pay. that our sheriff is underpaid. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not coming from the sheriff. Uh, it's nothing to do with it. But if you look at the overtime, we have deputies that are making more money than the sheriff and not the sheriff. Yep. You know, is that ethically right? 
for the amount of hours they put in, the phone calls they get, they're on call basically 24 7. And right. yet we have deputies. So, no problem just the way it is. Right. And maybe, at, maybe that was the same case when you were in Grand Traverse County or whatever, but we have deputies making more money than our elected officials. And then when you look at the pay range, the difference between the sheriff and other sheriff, yeah. it's, it's pretty minor. So, you don't do it for the money, obviously. Well, but if you look from a strictly financial standpoint, how many extra duties the sheriff has to the under sheriff, and if you look at the pay scale, there's hardly any difference between the two. I mean, you, you could go on senior services. Trudy Gallo can make a case for this planning. Is, I mean, it's, this is where I'm thinking yeah. this. Uh, Madam Chair, go ahead. My preference would be we did these because we had to. Mm -hmm. We do the rest of them as a group at some point. Right. That would be, I think that's. And that's maybe you bring it outside consultant because sometimes that helps, you know. But I didn't want to separate all these because there's legal issues involved. In I think that would be a, a really good idea to um, take these to the board and then, and then we would have this clearer picture moving forward. That's not to complicate it, just do these one at a time. My question about overtime was simply to get that on the table so everyone knew where it coming from. No one, no one came to me and suggested we cut the budget for the clerks. Okay. Overtime. I just want to clarify that. Good. Well, the question was brought up, and I think all of us needed to have that answer in case there are things out there floating. I just want to be on the record that it was no one came to me requesting or suggesting we cut the overtime in the clerk's office. It was a question where the board has that authority. Because take all the politics out of it, let's say we have a treasurer that's upset with the board for whatever reasons, and that treasurer wants to give more overtime to the chief deputy if they're hourly. Once that standard is set the first year, there's no turning back. Yeah. So really the board does lose control by having these hourly. That alone is a great reason to put them on salary. It is. To avoid those type of yeah. and I don't Overtime, overtime serves a Board purpose. We budget overtime for a reason. It serves a purpose when it comes down to it, and it, and it has. So, um, but I think for professional reasons, these should be salary positions. They are professional okay. positions. All right. So um, that brings us to the end of here. Do we want to make a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners t today? Or, um, but do we have a dollar amount that we're going to I, we have, if we take these one at a time, first question is um, the register of deeds. Register of deeds started in that first year. We can keep her there or we can move her up if we choose to. So register of deeds is at, um, this, right now she moved up one year, so she is at the 70. 797, which is the one year. Yeah, and at the one year. One year right now. Um, and legally, we can leave her there. The top of her scale is 75. If we move her up to 75, it would immediately put her um, lockstep with the other two that are comparable, which is the uh, the. Un the uh, clerk and the uh, treasurer. Well, it's not the clerk. Yeah, the clerk. Yeah. Clerk, that's right. Clerk and the treasurer. Yes, thank you. Clerk and the treasurer. Where those three have always been. So we we can take action or not take action, whatever you, whatever you choose to do. In three years, she will top out. Is that your yes, current? Sir. Are you currently at seventy seven nine seven? I am currently at seventy seven nine seven. Yeah, but every year then it, you will have to continue to keep me at the stop. Right. Because that, yeah. was, that is what was approved at the beginning of the term. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we're all agreed. That's right. So when we budget this summer, you'll be moving up to the seventy two four ten. If you don't take any action. If you don't take any action, that's going to happen automatically. It's my understanding. Okay. Um, that would be the first one. Second one, then, is uh, a, a more complex. I'm sorry, was there a recommendation on the. Not yet. Okay. I, I didn't know if that was something. No. 
Second thing we have to look at then is the, the under sheriff. Um, and he needs to be at the top. The only question is, are you going to make it retroactive? As, yeah, so, so the, the under sheriff. Uh, I think we have to, because we have to send a message to the other employees that we're going back from when stuff like this happens. Um, I would support it, but uh, I guess I, I'm suggesting that we at least throw a motion to the rest of the board and let the board decide. Let the board decide. So your motion is to move the under sheriff up to the top of the scale, which is 82, 58, 54. And you mentioned retro. Uh, Your motion. A second motion of retro. Second motion. Okay, so for the first motion, I support the first motion. Any other discussion? Just, just as a thought, and I don't know, but we could, we can, we can just do it this year. We can make it retroactive, or we could phase it in. Uh, okay. And 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 I, I'm not sure which we. How want. can you phase it in? Well, do. We meet halfway in the middle. I the, think we have. Okay, uh, legally he has to. Be we top. have to move. No, but I mean for the last year. Oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah that's retro. Retro. and that's the decision. And no, Mr. Keystone always legal rights are so. I, I don't speak on his behalf. He's got his hand up. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, Jim. I guess if in the middle with me, you put me at the top, you pay me retro. I would not expect that retro to raise that salary next year, contrary to the law. If that's the middle. Because obviously that's the part of the. the that's a very good that's, point. that's a very good question because that's, what we'd have to do is have a legal opinion to have that in okay. writing, and I think too, Jim. If, if you go retro, you would go to the day, the last day that I'm not sure Morgan was here. Whatever this would take because we I would, would not look to add that to next year to put you in the same group. Yeah. But legally, we may have, be, let's, have to be a let's leave the retro time. out today and get a legal opinion. Yeah, we have to this one yeah, I Okay. Yeah. I, I do have a question on that. So yes. um, I'm thinking of this on the Human Resources Act that I've worn for a long time. And what happens is, is if you do do a retro pay, I would suggest that if that is a recommendation because his MERS will need to be corrected for last year, which will also affect his benefit, his high FAC. Yep. So if he wins the lotto next year then and leaves, that year is reported correctly at the wage that the board would have done at the time. I'm not looking to make the same problem next year. No, okay. but that right. is, so what happens is when you do a one time, this is what it should have been. We go back and we correct his wages in MERS for last year of what it should have been. Okay. And the county pays in yep. um, on those wages yep. and then it's reported for the year that that was his earnings. His W-2 would show it for this year, but on his benefit package, it goes back. So at the very least, so, <coughs> right, that, right. Thank you for that. So, so we have to move it up to the top, which is at 82. But we're in April, so. Let me get a legal opinion from Mr. Stoker. If we were to make it retroactive, how we could do that and not impact future. Because you're right. Right. I mean, I'm fine. It's yeah. a matter of where yeah. retro. So we even today, should we go back to January 1 for, go back to January 1, 2022, and move Jim up to the, to the top of the scale. Yeah, we'll put that on the okay. page. So that's Assuming. the motion. Okay. And then we'll get a legal opinion on last year and how to proceed with last the retro year point. and bring that question to the board. Okay. All right. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So 3-0 on um, Mr. Kiesel. Um, the Chief Deputy Register of Deeds. We have the um, suggestion of moving her the position, I should say, up to the 56941. 56, That's a recommendation of the administrator to, to make it. The chief deputy for Mr. Deeds yeah. and the treasurer. And the chief deputy yeah. treasurer, both positions. Yeah. We, the same. I guess they are both the same. Yeah, I mean, they're technically both the same. And you heard from Mr. Stoker, there are no legal issues with that. So basically the salary could be a one step 
salary. Well, there would be no salary. It's just this is the salary. It'd be 56941. And that would not be retroactive. That would just from whatever you passed the motion. And that that's just that's just the attorney's. It's just the attorney's. That's just our administrator's recommendation. He picked that number, as he said, based on some of these other charts. What we do have with, it, with these two. Right. As, as your that. recommendation, yeah. sure. Okay. But if we want to look at this, we really could pick anywhere from 40, 49 up, right? Their tech, whatever that yes. highest wage was last year, which was around 49. So it doesn't yes. have to be 56. You can no. pick 50, 52, 54, 56. 65. 65. Right. Here is your choice <laughs> as a board. Yeah. That's just one of the things. This is. The administrator is recommending 56. It doesn't necessarily have to be 56, but um, well, we have to look at if he's going to have to fill a position. We, he has to fill a position. Say where his, I don't think we need to lower it any. Not going to. And uh, I just want to say, yeah. Okay. Yes. I just want to make sure the we understand. Based with your input also, so I just want to make sure. Okay. And you're on the. Thank you for that check. That is a very good, right? valid point. Yeah. So to fill those positions, is it our recommendation then to ask those two? Positions to go salary based and set them at the 56.941. Okay. I have a consensus. It's barely. Should we vote on it? All those in favor? We don't have a motion. <laughs> so moved. All right. The four. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 The board uh, doesn't meet, won't take action for a month on this. Uh, it would seem like the treasurer could. Uh, put a pending salary in yeah. the posting. Yeah, I was, we can work out potentially. Yeah. Well, yeah, we can see what he gets, you know, yeah. for apps now. Yeah. Right, right. Hopefully that'll help a lot. Okay, um, we have the chief deputy clerk. Um, and it sounds like that. We have what our attorneys recommended as a safe option and that is put the chief deputy if we want to go to salary we can either leave her at, at um hourly leave the position at hourly or set it at a sailor at a salary at 68. And i'm saying 68,000, whatever the clerk and i asked for legal opinion where the salary would be in compliance with law and the response was yes yes salary yes 68. 68. 68, whatever. 051. 051. So basically, okay, well based that's on what we found out, the legal opinion, and based on what this position paid last year, we don't have many options other than to go out above this. It'll be set till at least the end of 2024. Okay, so does it, so that's my motion. Is that fair? Clark? Yeah, she said yeah, that I, was a defendable position. Yeah, yeah. And I want to make sure, just like with these positions, I work with the clerk to come up with this. And we base this based on past and the fact that whoever was in that position, 40 hours a week has been a standard for that position. So both of you are, Michelle, 68 or whatever it is. No. 68051. He said it was defendable. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that's my motion. I support it. And it's just support. Okay. No other discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Three zero. Um, and then that brings us that do you, um, is there a motion or any action on um, the request for the register of deeds? So she's at 70, 797, in three years she'll be at the top, or is there any um, thought of changing that at all? Again, we, we have options, we can leave it at seven. 797 or go anywhere up if we choose we can move it up one year cut out a year we could go up two years cut out two years or go up three years and cut out three years or let uh or let it take its course is the administrator's recommendation 7797 well based on what we found out if we did that she would continue with the steps and would hit the top anyway so two years that's right that's what i was thinking was as long as she's okay with it, just I think you're the 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 sure you continue to move up on the steps. Yes, yeah, so I do take into consideration that the previous register was at the top and I got moved backwards. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Taking the people out of it. 
Right. That position was paid at the time. Take the people out of it. If she was still here, she would be making that. If if she then retired during her term, person coming in would, would be, have been up there. And odds are, if we had this legal opinion knowledge prior to this year, the salary progressor he's probably would have been the same in twenty in, in the last four years as it is going forward. Okay. But legally, you do have options on that one. Okay. So we could, uh, on this one, compromise too. You get halfway there. If you could. If you would choose to make that recommendation, it would go to the full board. What would that amount be? 70? Well, if you look at this original yeah, pay yeah. scale. Go to 70, and at the end of 324, she'd get the rest of them. Yeah. She's and again, take the person out of it. It's, you know, look at the position itself, where it was last term. No, I understand. I feel for you, but you, you know, when you ran, you knew that, that you were going to start. Yeah, I mean, it's not like so. In very simple terms, you could keep her at the seventy, seven nine seven, and knowing that in year two, three, and four, she hit the top of seventy five. You could put her at any of those steps above that. Yeah. So you could put her at seventy two four. You could put her at seventy four zero. Or you put her at seventy five seven. I'm running these out. Right. So would, January. Would, I would make the motion that we put her at 72 410. Okay, support. Support. Okay. Um, so that next year I would move up a year? Yes. yes. So if the board approved that, it your takes salary one year in May would be adjusted to 72 410 on January 1st next year, it'd be 74. And and then my last year would be 75. Yeah. Plus any adjustments the board makes on top of that. Correct. Which I'm guessing will be 3.25%. Based so on the you year. would actually hit that top because the fifth is actually in the next term. No, because they're they're proposing to move me up. Right, but I meant if you have at the end of four, you still have one more year because you have a start one, two, three. But if they're moving me to yep, two years. You'll get to the top right in your four year. So four just so we're so what the motion is to put her in 2022 at 72, 4, yes. 10, right? Yep, that's our motion. 2023, 74, yep. and then 2024, 20, 20, 75, 7, plus any adjustments. Election year, correct. So yes. at the end of the term, you would be at the, at the top. Okay, I think we understand where we're at. So all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Okay. So, um, very good work, people. Uh, any other personnel issues? The administrative assistance, what did you decide now? Um, I think we decided to wait and look at, am I correct? We're going to look at some more of these. Yeah, it could be just be nice, but I just want to make sure for the record we have that. So, your, your recommendation to board is to, at this time not adjust it and review it. We just did the three elected. Four, four, yes. Or no, or no. Yep. We did her and then we did the chief deputies. Yes. We're not going to put her in with the chief deputies. No. That's the I question. Yeah, that's the question because she's not not what Mr. Stoker um, legally was. Legally, can. Well, we legally can. Um, and then that's where we were talking about are we going to open that can of worms because who else now would we start? Picking off. Do we want to look at those all as a package, like, like uh, Commissioner Wessel recommended, or do we just want to start picking them off? Yeah, I guess I look at her. She's like checked on the shit. Okay, so you did make a recommendation in our first meeting for that stipend for yes. the administrative assistant. We table that based on this discussion. So is your recommendation um, still that you get the stipend? You were not that's budgeted, team. correct? That's budgeted, yes. Yeah, that's budgeted. She okay. should be getting that, and that's my understanding. Well, we had that agenda in February, I believe. Oh, okay. When the decision was made, we're going to wait till we have this discussion. Okay. But this committee did recommend it at our original meeting that she be given a state that stipend for $2,000. So oh, the stipend or the um, parks and rec? From the parks, parks and rec budget. Rec. Was it a weekly no. or monthly or just because she's salary, yep. you cannot go forward. You can legally she's recognize some. past efforts and give a stipend a couple times a year to hourly employee. She, she's you cannot hourly. go forward 
and so make she, an hour employee known she get a stuck on top of that. Does she turn in overtime for the uh, parks? I mean, it's, well, she turns in one time sheet. That's everything's included. No, but she said she's salary? No. no, she's hourly. Oh, she's oh hourly. he just said she's salary. He did. He oh, oh, had, he I'm misspoke. Sorry. She's an hourly position. Okay. okay. And the but answer over here is yes. The yes. only issue I have with giving her the stipend is if she's also turning in those hours in overtime, that's paying. She has a few overtime hours. She does come in well, a lot of times. Yeah, they right. It's pretty working. hard to accumulate overtime. I'm She's you know, our parts are uh, meetings are well. The, yeah, our hours. the reality is she does a lot of work at home because of the charges for it. So, the, this committee's recommendation originally was to recommend that stipend for two thousand dollars. But that was that, and that was at the retro or moving forward. You, you cannot go forward for an hourly. You cannot give a stipend to an hourly. But we could set a. Because you can't over. You I know can't why am I thinking that it was a. Shot, yeah. But it has to be for retroactive. For retro, that's for, yes. Go ahead, so I, I believe it was clarified in the budget for 2022 um, when the, the, the weekly stipend was discussed at your budget work session. When Chet got his legal opinion, I believe the hourly employee would have their 35 hours that they would turn in. And then let's say you decided that you wanted to do it quarterly. For the work, you can then pay the stipend. So you, let's say if it's $3,500, you'd split that into the four. So her work from January 1 to March 31st, yes. and she would receive the pay then for the, that set. So it, well, has, it has to be, to be after. after. Yes. Correct. Gotcha. Well, okay. So I make, I make a motion that, is that, we're not doing that now? So my motion well, would you, be is that we need, we need to do you, that. You actually, this committee approved this. So we would do it in this. April. She would be paid from January to April for this extra work that she is doing. Yes, or January to March. Yep. That well, I recommend it uh, for six months. You do it twice versus four times. So then you'd be waiting. So I'm the same thing. I just said six be months. Okay. But if it's in the budget, our, our, uh, the consensus is that that's for 2022, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. We, ha we haven't that. been, so that's what yeah. that's what he's looking okay. for. Yeah, I yes. recommend you know why this board twice approve a year that. Instead? Our employee legally the fewer stipends. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. There's no issues if you gotcha. make it rich, but you can't guarantee it. There's no guarantee going forward. You can't say we're going to do this twice a year. Gotcha. Every time you do a stipend, it has to be independent of so. past. You can't say you can't pass a motion saying we're going to give her for the last six months. By the way, we're going to give you six months. Six months from now, another site. So right. in June, do we, is it an actionable? That's what I'm wondering. June? I think did, when you asked about that with the legal opinion, was it something that you could direct that per the budget of such and yeah. such, the work performed from January to June 30th will be paid out to such employee okay. at this amount? Even if you want to do it in, uh, or can it let's just say be May, it doesn't have to be just for this year. It could be for past years. It yeah, just, I understand that. Okay. I just want to. So if you're doing, let's just say May for six months, you could acknowledge the extra efforts for the past six months, even though that one month was in the past budget year. My money's budgeted in this year. Because stop. we have a calendar budget, I, I just think it's clean to do it, yeah, to do I'm it not, So I'm saying leave. Yeah, I get it. Okay. But you can't, in the motion, say, we're going to give you a six month stipend, right. and we're going to give you six months, six more in December. Okay. Each well, stipend how, has to be individual. We'll have to make sure that we get. Yes, Allison. So are you making a motion or are you, is there a consensus? I'm not I think there's a consensus that that'll happen in June, that this will come to us in June to do a January through Well, January. I will make that recommendation of June meeting. If you wish to endorse it. You, right. You actually did at a first meeting in February endorse it once. Since it is. Yeah, you were here, but the vote was two zero to endorse it. I put it on the agenda, but I asked to table it until we had discussion about salary. So if you're not going to adjust your salary, I'm going to put it back on the agenda. Okay. Knowing that this committee recommended it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So nothing's changed. From that you, okay. Is that fair summary? Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else? Any other special meeting? Okay. Any other topics or next meeting date? I was thinking it would probably be helpful if Mr. Stoker could participate in our May meeting with full board. I think okay. it's helpful having it here. It's okay. most a cost for us. Oh. But I, I think it would be helpful for the other commissioners because this is a very gotcha. complex issue. Okay. Yeah. The three of you. Sure, he the, can be there. That's the other ones. If, if I was a part of this meeting, if I was just a commissioner, I'd be very confused by this. Right. He may. 
um, th there may be other questions or likely to be other questions. So that's a very good, um, very good point. So, yes, um, I'm, I'm just checking off everything on your agenda here. What I did not hear is after you got done with the register of deeds, did you want the treasurer and the clerk to be set at one salary? The treasurer, no, not the clerk. I didn't hear anything about that. Meaning, is, is this, I think well, what there's no saying, action, so right, are you saying, right, are you adapting this yeah. as your new wage schedule, you know, like a motion to adapt this wage schedule that's proposed? So basically, oh. we're looking down the steps. Right, right. I didn't hear anything. Oh, right. yeah, we, um, let me find that one now because I just shifted papers. Um, yes, that's the attorney's recommendation that we go to. So, in simple terms, we could use this. We'll adjust the register deeds to what you are recommending, mm -hmm. and basically recommend this with the adjustment for the register deeds. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm asking. The steps right. don't come into play for the clerk and the yeah. treasurer's position until 2025, because both positions are at the max. So if there's a yeah. vacancy. So we would eliminate. In the so we would adopt this. Deeds. Okay. That's yeah. With the revised yeah, register deeds. And the register of deeds is still on a step. For so history, basically, right? yeah. you would have your own line here. There would be no start. You would have to start the two-year, the three-year. Year, yeah. Three year yeah, yeah, we'll adjust. You wouldn't yeah. have you wouldn't have a step. It's just during budget time. It's going to have to be noted what yeah. the step would be to get that budget yeah. in, plus whatever normal adjustment would happen. Okay. So yes, I would recommend we we adapt this wage schedule. So basically, eliminating the steps. Eliminating the steps, correct. Well, actually, we got a lot done in an hour and a half today. Mm -hmm. So is, is, is there support that this, or consensus that this is what we're, let's do it by motion. Take it to our board. Recommend to the board of commissioners to adopt this wage schedule as, as discussed with the changes. So is it? <laughs> Is there support? Support to send this forward? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Very good. We'll move forward. To May meeting. All these will come to the May. May. Perfect. All these will come to a May executive. Yeah. Yes. And I'll either get a half day over this past year. Okay. Because I think it really would really be helpful for all commissioners. Um, the uh, you know, item five of the other topics next meeting day is it. Would it be possible to have the administration have a schedule of meeting for for some time in, in late May, and have the administrator come to just review any of these other ones that he thinks need to be looked at? Well, um, I think we should either in May. You may make perhaps May and make a recommendation as we move into budget because we're going to be moving right. into budget really soon. Or do we want to look at them at a special meeting and budget with the whole board there? We can do it. There's some different ways we can do it. So, and I really don't know how many more, you know, there's, um, but we haven't touched yet, right? Temporary office assistant, the executive assistant, but for the stipend. I know the senior services coordinator has come up in the past, uh, or director, um, coordinator, so those are probably where do we finance director? We looked at last night. Um, human resources director, we set that. Planning, so planning director, utilization directors, kind of. We're in the changeover there with our interim. So that one's already set, I would say. So I don't know, whatever you think. If you'd like to do that, try to, do you want to look at all of them or a couple of them or what do you have? Well, to we've been reminded several times that, that looking at all of them is, opens up a can of worms. Mm -hmm. But I wondered if, I'm worried about a couple of the court ones. I think we might have some issues there. Okay. And out of fairness to the staff, we should look at all. Now we could keep them safe. It doesn't mean we have to adjust them. But out of fairness to everyone, I don't want to. You know, the court, the judge was here last time, talked about her situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that at some point the drain commissioner is going to come in and talk about this incredible salary of uh, fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> and how much work he's done. And so you can make a case that our finding directors. 
so staff sheets under pay. You know, I think we've doubled that. I, I, I don't that know. The, so the drain commissioner's salary the has doubled. Is, <laughs> the, the problem is, and this is not unique to Little County, every county's struggling. Like John pointed out, he has one applicant. Yeah. Uh, Grand Charles County either did or will shortly, they told us, give a, on top of what the unit agreed, a 5% raise across the board for every single position. Yeah. Because well, they're dealing with, I mean, it, every county I talk to is dealing with these issues. So it's not unique. And there's no magical way of doing it. And so I think we're trying to do the best we can. We're trying to be fair. We, we're, we're starting off with the legal issues. So we're, we're doing What that. I want to look at, I, mean, I guess what I like to look at, and I wouldn't mind looking at comparable counties and what they're paying, but it, it gets difficult because we, we do have such a wage and benefit package up here, such a valuable wage and benefit package. I think that that weighs in. I know I know it's difficult sometimes for new employees to they want more dollars instead of better health insurance because they. Um, I'm going to go again on the yeah, health. We got a great package, but you still got to put food on the table. Well, I understand that, and I mean, that's no, what so I'm those saying. Those days are over with. I I I disagree that's because why we have, should we talk about Florida House? It, it just it all connects. Pretty soon we won't even have a high school out here. Because no one lives here but has kids because they can't afford it. And <coughs> it's even bigger than that. I know. That that's comes, what I'm that's just, that. We're know. not the only employer in the Alarm County. So very same thing happens. You know, businesses, do they have to start paying more to get those employees? Do they have to help house their employees like they're doing there? We're, we're, well, I think we have to ask the employees and listen to the employees, maybe what they want. Maybe they want a little less health benefits, more as the, as the gentleman said last night, though, you know, and, and I don't, I, I, I can't discount our benefit package here. It does not cost our employees anything out of pocket. And sometimes I don't think employees looking at the wage, they're looking at only the wage, not even thinking what they won't have to be out of pocket for this premium health insurance, where one incident could put them far behind what they'd be making if we were five dollars more an hour, ten dollars more an hour. One one health incident. And I could talk about hours about that because I don't get the county insurance. So I can tell you what it costs out of pocket without having county insurance sometime. Um, because it's huge. And not to mention that our retirement. I see the same thing in another industry I'm involved in. New employees, they just want big wages up front because they like boats and toys and houses and and pools, I mean, pools at their houses, etc., and not really thinking that, gee, in 30 short years, I'm going to retire. I but that goes back to that. That's an individual, individual choice. Absolutely. Okay. I agree. We don't I agree. That. But okay. all, right. all three of you remind me that you have a cup. Okay. Seven, seven minutes. Minutes. All right. Well, we so at this point, yeah. we, can, we can schedule another date if we need to, but I, I do want to see some. I'd have to see some comparables too. So, would, I do, would, I would the administrator be able to to bring this back with some comparables on on positions he thinks yeah, are out of line? towards the MMA. Mm -hmm. I think even for we will try. Yeah. I, I know the council of well, Memphis Northwest. The surveys from the positions. I know Mac has some. You know, once again, you can look at numbers, make at least have a dialogue. Yes, if you want to set a meeting towards the end of May, we'll try to do the best we can. So this way, the board can deal with these issues up front. And I thought we got a lot done here this morning. All right. And then look at so if you want to set a date in May, and if we have the data, great. If don't, we can always cancel. It. But at least I know it's tough to get a date. So if you want to set a date in May, we, we can try to right. set a date in May right now, or the first part of June, whatever works for yeah. everybody. Did you put your calendar away, Rick? Um, you know, like Wednesday the first of June would probably be a good day for me. Because we're, we're already Wednesday, going to be here so. for parks. Does that work? If you try to Wednesday, Wednesday the first of June. Off, June third. So, that's the you're talking about. No, June 1st, she suggested. Oh. I'm looking at Wednesday. We have parks at 3 o'clock. We could do it that very same day if that works. Sometimes. Well, probably at least looking at two hours. Well, if you want to start, uh, if you have parks at 3, you can start at 1. 1 yeah. and do a yes. two hour? June All right. 1. Yeah. So June 1. Yeah. So the Wednesday, you said? 
Yes. At 1 p.m. Right? Yes, at 1 o'clock p.m. And we'll try to get compare. We'll try to do the best we can. Yeah. And if it cuts close, we don't, we can decide what we want to or not. Yeah, if we, if we don't have the information or whatever, then we'll, okay, sounds good. All right, uh, uh, public, uh, any other comments, discussion items, comments, anything else? We Yes, Laura? Uh, I just wanted to bring it to your attention. We have a committee meeting, a parks committee meeting at 1.30 that same day. So if you do hold that, I'll have to hold it somewhere with different equipment. Okay. Now, it's not a committee meeting for either Commissioner Robbins or myself? No, it's a Veronica family. Veronica family. Okay, else. yeah, we can. We'll meet, yeah, we'll have a meet somewhere else. Okay. All right, thank you, Laura, for that. All right, so, um, okay, nothing else. Uh, public, any public comment? All right, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.